wonderful people. I had some people request that I do another video about Marina Joyce or at least about the issues that her situation raises. The first thing I want you to think about is this. Why is it that millions of people will flock to see what is essentially a car crash, car crash in people's minds happening and we see someone else's mental illness as a joke, as something to be laughed at, as something that we should get to watch with some kind of morbid pleasure. That to me is indicative of people's attitudes to mental health and to mental illness more importantly. Someone started a change.org petition to get Marina removed from YouTube because she must be leading us all astray. Oh my God, it's so awful that someone with a mental illness gets to have a life. I mean, come on, really. It's a hand-me-down attitude, which, you know, we've kind of updated that now. We know about mental illness. We know that it's not this big scary thing that means that you should be, you know, locked in your bedroom, never to be seen again. We don't do that anymore. It's not the 1940s or whenever that happened, until quite recently actually. Mental illness can end people's lives. It's very serious. It's not a joke. Although those of us that have mental illnesses, we do joke about it. Humour will hone in at some point or another on disability or illness. You still hear people say things like, oh, I thought I had this brilliant piece of feedback from someone oh and then i found out they were locked in a mental hospital as if that somehow m invalidates that person's praise of you and it doesn't of course my opinion and the opinion of marina is just as valid as yours we can still vote but the problem is if you allow those attitudes to continue unchecked you prevent people from asking for help when they do experience mental ill health because they're afraid that they're going to be stigmatised forever because they think they're going to be laughed at or deserted by their loved ones, kicked out of their job. All you do by demonstrating those attitudes is reinforce that fear. People will get to the stage where things are really serious when they could have been prevented and that's a really tragic thing I think and that should really weigh heavily on you if you're the kind of person that goes around spreading this misinformation when actually a quick google search is all you need to do to find out the facts, the statistics, the fact that people with mental illnesses are more vulnerable to crime than likely to commit crime, more likely to have violence committed against them than to commit violence themselves. We know the facts so you need to go and educate yourself and stop harbouring this fear, which probably comes from, you know, a lot of times people with mental illnesses that do talk about it, we will say things that make you think, crikey, that, that's actually me. And that's inducing fear in people. It's a very fine line between sane and insane. And I think I said that in my last video as well. It keeps coming up time and time again, which is true, isn't it? If you remember nothing else from this video, please, remember that. I would never choose to be in pain for years of my life and I would never choose to have been routinely laughed at and made to feel like I was useless and to endure you know the battles that happen within my own mind that have got in the way of my career and of my family why would I choose that no one would choose that that's why if you say to someone with schizophrenia pull your socks up that's why they don't do it because it's not a choice in Philip DeFranco's most recent video that he did about Marina he asks the question so we can see that this is happening and what do we do about it well, the simple answer to that is you don't do anything. You only have a window into Marina's life. Only her family and her close friends and people that actually see her day to day know what's going on with her. The best thing that we can do is to stop speculating about it and not to react with shock to some of the things that she says in her post. If you think about this, she posted something about being a goddess and wanting to build a temple. That's what she's seeing. That's amazing. Wouldn't you like to feel that way? Wouldn't you like to suddenly see that everything around you is beautiful and that all of us are gods, but people want to, what, quash that because it doesn't fit in with our societal norms? That's horrible. I've got 
friends who can't leave the house because they have paranoid delusions that they're being followed they are living in that dark place 24 7. if you see a facebook post from someone saying something that to you seems like complete nonsense just remember that we have a lot of very accepted religions in our world most of the heads of government in the western world are religious it isn't that far removed from the goddess and the temple thing. If you can imagine what it's like for someone who is having delusions, whatever it is that you believe is not inhibited, so it kind of grows out of proportion. As humans, we're always looking for meaning. You know, what happens after we die? Surely we must have souls. What about the spirit, the universe? Everyone's downloading meditation apps. People are trying to have spiritual awakenings and to feel more connected to themselves. With a less inhibited view of the world, you might think the same way that Marina says she's thinking right now. Just say, oh wow, that sounds wonderful. I hope it goes well. You don't need to sort of make some intervention, especially not by the means of Facebook. And we, I think it's stupid to imagine that people, just because they're having some sort of an episode, would suddenly be barred from using social media. It's unrealistic, especially if that person's life is social media. I think we have to assume that her family are unlikely to not want the best of her. I think it's unlikely that they would have not asked for help. Treatments do not always work immediately. Continue on as normal. If we start reacting in a shocked way or in a negative way when she says things like this, you might then sow the seeds of paranoia because you're basically asking her to doubt herself and making something which feels very positive to her very negative all of a sudden and that can't feel nice if you imagine if you were in that situation where you were having this beautiful experience of the world and someone came along and said don't be ridiculous you would feel pretty aggrieved by that our world the world that we all individually inhabit is just a perception we don't know if we see things the same way as somebody else, we can never know that because we all come to it with a lens, our own lens that's made up of past experiences, um, there are cultural lenses, uh, religion comes into it as well. All of the things m are molded together to make you as a person and the way that you experience and perceive the world. Who's to say that your perception of the world and someone else's are the same anyway? So. There are thousands of thoughts about that you probably sound a bit crazy and you just don't voice them. Well, imagine if that sort of filter is switched off. We'd all be going around talking about things which are very high in the sky and probably sound to us in our inhibited perceptions crazy. So again, the biggest thing that you can do for someone is be there to support them, be there to listen, acknowledge what they're saying, don't try and diminish it. Don't draw parallels to, you know, I know another person and he had depression, so your depression must be the same as his depression because no two people are the same. I know a lot of people with schizophrenia, every single one of those people's experience is completely different and they honestly couldn't be more different because we're all different, we're all different people. We've got our intentions, like it depends what you wanna do with your life. You know, there are people that go and live in Buddhist monasteries, but that's not very much different to building a temple and calling yourself a goddess. Non-judgmental listening. Living with, maybe caring for, someone with a mental illness. So when I first went vegan, I was really desperate to share that with people around me to share what I'd found out doing the research that I'd been doing leading up to the time when I did become vegan. But I, I quickly realised that that probably wasn't the way to go because although it was a huge thing for me, other people don't have the same goals as me. They don't have the same wants or desires in life. They don't necessarily think those things are important in the way that I do. So it's very tempting to be evangelical about something that you've just discovered or about a positive experience that you're having. Just like when you're watching TV with your partner or your family, you watch a film together and something crazy happens and you turn to each other and go, wow, that's, 
you know, you'll discuss it and that half of the joy of watching a film with another person is that you can both have an experience and talk to one another about it. And that's basically the entire premise of social media. That's why we like social media. We're sociable animals. When you have dreams, there are sometimes they're just bizarre because your mind's trying to sort things out and put things away in memory and make more neural pathways and make sense of what you've seen and heard in the world around you or experienced in it through any of your senses. So it needs to come up with some kind of a storyline to get everything to go in its right place. When you unlock all the doors between the real and the dream, things start to kind of bleed into one another. Creative people that I know who are musicians, artists, most of those people seem to have a slightly different way of viewing the world. And a lot of times they also have mental illnesses, sometimes very serious ones. So if you just count out people that have mental illnesses and say, you know, you shouldn't be allowed to do this, well, you're missing out on all of that talent, all that creativity. Like music makes us happy, art makes us happy, but we can all share in those things. Why do we look down so much on people who are being creative in that way or are telling us that their, their current perception of the world is different. We should be welcoming that. And I'm not saying that we should be welcoming illness. I'm just saying that you have to think about the reasons that you judge other people. The most difficult thing about living with someone that has a mental illness is probably just being afraid to do something wrong, being afraid to say something that might affect them negatively. People are very afraid of suicide when mental illness is mentioned and that's understandable. You just need to be kind to yourself when it comes to that. The main thing is to try and make whatever it is that you do say non-judgmental. So remember you might need to give that person a bit of extra leeway because they're not feeling 100% well. Don't feel the need to constantly question their reality or to get angry with them. Even if you feel angry, even if you feel frustrated, try to channel that somewhere else for the time being as whilst you're trying to support that person try and help them to find coping mechanisms so something like going for a walk every day in the evening go with them remind them to do it if they haven't done it go and find new routes together just make them feel like they're not alone and ask them if there's anything that you could do to help them maybe taking the weight off doing jobs around the house for a bit if they're feeling bad making sure that they're looking after their physical well-being so if they're forgetting to wash or even self-harming you can help them to care for themselves after that's happened and I know that's a really tough ask I know it's really difficult for loved ones to do that open door for talking non-judgmental listening provide companionship if they want it but if they want to be left alone give them breathing space don't be constantly trying to get them to engage if they don't want to. You need to look after your own well-being as well. So if you feel yourself getting angry or frustrated, channel that elsewhere. Talk to somebody else outside the situation that doesn't know you and doesn't know your family member or whoever it is that you're caring for. Also don't assume that the person will be, you know, completely unable to function. Try and keep them at the level they feel comfortable with to try and give them some structure and some routine. If it's possible, work and employment is generally a good part of recovery because it does give that routine and structure that need to get up and to care for your hygiene and then go somewhere and talk to people that you feel less comfortable with. So that's why you, when they come home to you, you want to provide the most supportive environment you can. Try and help them make their environment at home as comfortable as possible and as stress-free as possible. So if you think, if you add um, cognitive load on top of an already kind of maxed out system, that might exacerbate their symptoms. So make sure that things are clean and tidy, somewhere that they go to be safe in. It's really important when you're feeling really bad to feel safe, like to feel like your home is somewhere you'd want to spend time and you can just decompress whatever's happened in the day. That space and thinking time is really important. Try and make sure you've got healthy foods and drinks in the house so that there's stuff on hand. You don't have to cook for them or prepare all the meals of the day necessarily, but you need to maybe 
remind them to eat if they forget don't do any of this in a patronizing way if you can help it i know it's kind of difficult you might get a reaction that you weren't expecting but try not to take that personally just understand that having an illness is very stressful often so it's difficult to always keep your calm and if you you ask them something just at the wrong moment they might just kind of have a snap reaction and moods can change very quickly as well so you know you might have someone that seems on top of the world one minute and then five minutes later it's all crashed again it's a bit like a roller coaster i guess there are lots of very extreme highs and low lows some people stay at the low end all the time don't give up hope if you start giving up on that person then they will feel less supported another good tip would be find a carers group go and speak to some other people that don't know you get to know some of the issues they can help you avoid things that haven't worked for them or just being aware of some of those things is a good thing it's another tool that you can have at your disposal and it helps you to stay well it helps you to be able to decompress because that's just as important try and make sure they keep up to date with the boring admin that we all have to do in our lives so like paying the bills on time making sure they're getting the right medical treatment they might need to fill in forms to claim benefits things like that but try and help take again take that extra cognitive load off so they can really focus on getting well again. Don't be afraid to ask for help. You can go and see your GP. Organisations that employ lots of people have employee assistance programmes that are there for you and your family members to, f to phone up. You can just talk to someone on the phone. You can get support in being a carer. Even if it's the middle of the night and you want to just call them up and have a chat about something. You know, if you can't sleep because you're worried or you know, you're just too stressed out to relax. It's a good idea to make use of that service if you've got it, that's what it's there for. And your GP will be able to refer you on to local carers groups and also to make sure that the person with the illness is getting all of the support that's out there for them. You know, we are quite lucky in the Western world that we do often have these things and certainly in the UK where we we get it for free through the NHS and the waiting lists are long, things like support groups they don't normally have a waiting list, online forums where you'll find other people going through similar situations and that kind of community is really important as well. Read everything you can read, try not to ascribe a condition to someone unless it's been diagnosed because what really matters here is not the condition itself it's the effects that condition has on a person and every individual has different effects every individual will have different coping mechanisms anyway that's all i really wanted to say if you want more videos along these lines i'd be happy to make them i've got quite a lot of things stacked up to make videos about but i'd rather make videos about things that i know you want to watch so again um my thoughts with marina and her family and i hope that she can come through this difficult time in her life so my final thought is don't be afraid